Hey everybody, welcome back, Alex here. Now, if you are new here, then welcome. If you're old here, then you probably know me from the days I used to have tons and tons of native script tutorials on this channel, and I still do. But a lot of you have been requesting native script uh, and React Native and Flutter stuff. So today I wanna take a look at these two machines, the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, Apple Silicon, and the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. And uh, we're gonna see which of these machines builds React Native, Flutter, and Native Script the fastest. And we're gonna compare these two machines. Both of these machines are eight core machines. The MacBook Air has four performance cores and four efficiency cores, and the MacBook Pro has six performance cores and two efficiency cores. So that might play into effect. And uh, of course, the newer SSDs are a little bit faster as well. So that could also play a role. Just want to put that out there. Those are the differences. Also, the MacBook Pro 14 is a little bit uh, bigger. So it might have a little bit more space to cool things down. These builds that we're gonna be doing are not very intensive, so I doubt that we're even gonna start the fans, but I am gonna watch the fans here. Right now it says the fans are off. Of course, the MacBook Air doesn't have any fans. Uh, it's at 57 degrees, and this one is at 47 degrees with the fans off. So that's kind of where we're starting things today. All right, let's kick things off. I already installed NativeScript. I went through Homebrew, Node installation, um, both of the native environments, iOS and Android. And I have videos on this channel showing you how to do all that, pretty recent videos on the Apple Silicon machines. So check those out. In order to create a new NativeScript project, I have the CLI installed. It's just NS create uh, my, <laughs> my NS app one. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, NS create my NS app one. I will give it the dash dash ng flag. And what that does is it uses the Angular template. So you can create native script apps using JavaScript, TypeScript, Angular, React, Vue, and Svelte. By the way, all these frameworks, you get a native app. You get a native app, they implement it a little bit differently, each of the frameworks. But in the end, you end up with a native iOS and Android apps. React Native and NativeScript use JavaScript, and Flutter uses Dart. Okay, now we're all cut up. <laughs> Let's do this. Now, I didn't give it the time command. I could have done that. But uh, for this create part, uh, it uses network access to download packages. So uh, it's not going to make too much sense anyway. Now you just need to go into that directory, cd my ns app one. And in order to run this in the iOS simulator, all you have to do is just say ns run iOS, ns run iOS. Now this of course is going to uh, build the projects and start up the simulator, the iOS simulator. Let's make sure that it's closed on both of these and it is. And I think we're ready to go. I'm just gonna press enter at the same time. Now we'll visually see which one pops up first. Let's go. All right, searching for devices. <laughs> Looks like the uh, M1 Pro popped it up first and the OS started up first over there. M1 is still trying to do this. <laughs> I remember doing this comparison last year when I was doing M1 versus the Intel variety and how much faster the M1 was. But now the M1 Pro seems to be a little bit faster at this. And I think uh, native mobile app developers or mobile app developers are gonna notice this quite a bit that the new MacBook Pros might actually be better. And here we are, we've started up the app and that's it. The app is running, but we're still waiting for the one on the M1. I'd like to say it was close, but it was not that close. It took probably an extra 10 or more seconds to uh, to get things going on the MacBook Air M1. Okay, so that was uh, the native script test. By the way, I will be doing this entire test using iOS. And if you're interested in Android version of this test, let me know in the comments down below. Now, moving on to React Native. I'm not a regular React Native user, so I'm gonna be using the documentation to uh, figure this out. And it looks like we're gonna be using NPX React Native init. This is using uh, the React Native CLI, not Expo. I know you people are gonna yell at me in the comments, Sorry, we're gonna be using the CLI today. So npx react-native init my rn app one. Okay, I set it up the same way here as well. And you know what, what the heck? I know that they're gonna be using the network to do this, but we'll time it anyway, just in case anybody out there is curious. All right, we'll do this at the same time and let's go. Okay. We're going through the React Native steps. Downloading template, yada, yada, yada. Looks like they're uh, hand in hand here. They're pretty much at the same 
speed. Okay, MacBook Air is warming up just a little bit. 66 degrees. This one's at 55. And <laughs> they're done pretty much at the same time. MacBook Air is 26. 917 seconds. MacBook Pro is at 27.870 seconds. So MacBook Air edges it out a little bit. Now we're going to use the run instructions. Let's go into that directory and npx react native run iOS. Let's see which one of these builds the app first and brings up the simulator. Let's go. Oh, wow. The new MacBook Pro just pops it up immediately. That was pretty much instant. Definitely as far as the simulator goes, and the native iOS stuff, the new MacBook Pros are killing it. And this is the base model. This is the eight processor model. It's not even the high-end one that I have back there. So big difference there. The app hasn't started yet on either one of these. It's still building. It still says building the app. No other information is provided. Okay, the app has launched. There is some kind of error going on over there. I'm not going to go into uh, debugging that. Not sure what that is. Metro gave me some kind of error. Not sure what's going on there, but it finished and it launched the app in the simulator. The M1 MacBook Air is still building. Let's see if it gives me the same error. Okay, installed and it gives me an error. No bundle URL present. So something is not configured correctly. If anybody knows, you can comment down below. I'm not gonna debug this. That's not the point of this exercise is to see which one will finish the build first and start up the app. So this is clearly a runtime error in the app because the app started up. So uh, we have, I think, a winner as far as React Native goes. Good to know. On to the next test, which is Flutter. I'm also going to cheat on this one because I'm not a regular Flutter user. So what do we need to do first here? Um, oh, I downloaded the SDK and I also mapped the path to the SDK's bin directory so that uh, I can use the command line. A little bit of a pain to do that, I, in my opinion. It should be pretty easy. Flutter, create my app. And uh, let's time it. Why not? Time, Flutter, create my app here as well and let's go hmm <laughs> that was really fast uh, both of these however 2.5 seconds versus 2.4 seconds not a huge difference let's go into the directory now if i just type flutter run right now it's going to open up chrome but i wanted to force to open up ios simulator actually i don't think it opens up the simulator i think i need to manually open the simulator have it running and then Flutter will detect it and deploy the app to it. So a little bit different workflow there. And in order to do that, I'm gonna just in case delete the Android and the web directories here. And there we go. That way we only have one <laughs> platform to deploy this to. So there's no ambiguity. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is say Flutter run and that should just build and deploy to the simulator. Flutter run and let's go. I pressed those pretty close to each other. Somebody in the comments said that uh, your dominant hand might be faster than your other hand by microseconds. Whatever, come on. This is all just in good fun. It's not super scientific. Okay, look at that. This one already opened it up and is running the app. We're still waiting for the M1 and finally it catches up. So yeah, quite a difference there. This one says the build was done in 15.7 seconds and this one says 18.1. It's a hello world app, folks. So if you see a difference like that, perhaps there's gonna be a bigger difference with a big project. So I'm a proponent of the M1 MacBook Air. It's a really nice machine and it's half the price of this one the MacBook Pro, the base model of MacBook Pro. So if you're doing mobile development and you don't mind waiting those differences that we've seen today, this might still be a good machine for you. However, if you're doing mobile development, you're most likely running other things like Android environment, maybe Xcode and multiple simulators and emulators. So at that point, you're gonna run into some RAM issues with the MacBook Air because it only has 16 gigabytes. Now, maybe next year, there's gonna be a MacBook Air with more RAM, maybe even an M Pro <laughs> MacBook Air, we'll see. But I'd say for mobile development, perhaps you have to seriously consider the MacBook Pros. However, if you're doing plain JavaScript development or just front end development, the MacBook Air is a perfectly good machine for that. And I have a video on that as well. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. And if this video was helpful or entertaining to you, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.